Good afternoon to the elders and to the drums that are here. I know, excuse my attire right now, today is kind of a casual day. Old folks say when you go to that drum, when you go to that arena, that's the best you can. Put your, your finest on. But today, my family's gone and we come here to enjoy ourselves, listen to this music. This gourd dance that Glenn was talking about, I'm the president of the Golden State Gourd Dance Society, an organization that was formed in the late 60s and 70s for these gentlemen that were in the service. Some of these people that come out here on relocation, either forced or they come out here on their own to make a better life for their family, their young families. They come from different parts of the United States where the government tried to inseminate us into the white man world. Excuse some of my language I might use because those are the times where I come from. And I don't mean no harm or no hard feelings on anybody. I love everybody. I love to meet people. I love to talk to people. I like to learn about where they come from so they can understand where we come from. These dancers you see out here, they're enjoying a part of something that you see there. They, they don't have these feathers that you're going to see here coming up in a few minutes. They dress like this. As Glenn had mentioned, this gourd that comes from hundreds, hundreds of years old. It's got to be taken from us at one time. Our ghost dances, our teepees, our peyote meetings. Are different ceremonies when the white civilization try to put this Christian way of life on us, which a lot of our tribes, a lot of our people accept it and still do to this day. Myself, I'm not a church going man, but I believe. My dad said, Believe in something. If you don't believe, you're going to be a lost soul. It don't matter what you believe in. We come from all over this part of the world. One thing I understand I met with people is music. We all have some sort of music to bring a newborn into this world, to pay homage to the ones we lose, to name people. Around this world, we use different instruments, but all those instruments are God-given from the Creator. These hides we use come from animals that we use to feed our families, to hide, to cover our dwellings. These songs that we're singing now are hundreds of years old. They belong to families, individuals, deeds that were done on the plains fighting different tribes. And we happen to still have them with us. They're not in, in, in books or nothing. This is all learned and remembered from up here. I think I probably forgot more than I know now to this day. Been singing since I was a five year five year old with these gentlemen. They're gone now. And I have the opportunity to sit here and visit these gentlemen over here, these drums, and tell them visit with them about them songs I heard when they weren't even born yet. But when they sing them, they bring back memories to me about the people that come to this community through the Southern California. This is the sec second largest population of Native Americans outside the state of Oklahoma. Here in Southern California, over 250,000 Native Americans live here, make their home here. And we're finally starting to be recognized with the help of you fine people that go spend your money at the casinos, that we can save some of our languages, some of our songs. A lot of these songs you see here out here, bird songs that, that these boys sing, 
they were almost lost at one time in the 60s and 70s. There were just a handful of gentlemen that sang them songs out in the desert. I remember that. I was a little boy late at night, early in the morning, listening to these gentlemen sing these songs. What are they singing? Now, with the help of preservation, of people taking interest, we're saving these songs for these young kids that we can carry on, that we will be there. At one time, they try to take everything from us. We take that from them, they can't do this. We take that from them, they can't do that. Dude. All of a sudden, we're going to be just like everybody else. No, oh, but we're not. We still enjoy singing these songs. These gentlemen that are singing these songs here, they don't belong to them. They belong to my people. The Kiowa people, I have a right to say what I want around that drum. Because I sat there like that young man and listened to this older gentleman talk. You didn't get up and down, you didn't run around, you didn't speak out of place. You sat there. They weren't talking directly to you, but they were talking to you. They were talking for you. And I remember those words now, as I get older, I'm sitting by myself. All my singers, he mentioned my drum group, Sooner Nation, there's all a bunch of boys from Oklahoma. They're gone now, I'm the only one left. But I sit there by myself sometimes, cry at my house. It don't hurt to cry. But I remember these songs. I wish I had a tape recorder, I, I say, you know, to, to record them. When, I, when I'm sitting by myself, and my kids said, Dad, use your phone. I said, well, I don't know how to use a phone. Come on, man. I had an old tape recorder, you know, real to real. But that's what we're going to spread this blanket for, for these gentlemen that are preserving these songs. We don't ask for to be paid not like that. These are for paying homage to these gentlemen that made these songs, these gentlemen that are preserving these songs, so that these gentlemen that are out here dancing can enjoy themselves just for this part of the program this afternoon. So I'm going to ask, Ben asked me if I, if I asked him if I could say a little bit. And I want you to understand, they say when somebody leaves us, they take something with them, and I believe that now. Mr. Begay, he said, he asked me sometimes, you know this song? Yeah, we sing it a long time ago, 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago. And at that time, they were 50, 60, 70 years old. So imagine how old some of these songs are that these people carry. These uh, singing men, they call them. My dad, Larry Garcia, the singing man.